California has a troublesome relationship with water. Whether it's too much water or not enough water, California always seems to be dealing with some sort of water-related crisis. California's difficult relationship with water is tied to the state's size and location. Most of California has a Mediterranean climate with wet winters and dry summers. Storing water from the wet season is necessary to supply water during the long, dry summers when there is little to no rainfall. This situation is exacerbated by the sheer size of California. The northern part of the state receives a majority of the precipitation, while the larger population centers are located in the drier southern portion of the state. Collecting water in the wet north, storing that water, then moving it to the agriculture and population centers to the south is a massive task. A massive task that California's water infrastructure simply cannot handle. Many of California's dams and reservoirs are over 50 years old. For example, the Oroville Dam, the tallest in the United States, was constructed in the 1960s. This dam faced a serious crisis in 2017 when its main and emergency spillways were damaged, prompting widespread evacuations. This event put a spotlight on the consequences of infrastructure failure. As the water infrastructure aged, California's population surged, further complicating the state's relationship with water. Thanks to that wonderful Mediterranean climate and a booming economy, California's population has nearly doubled in the past 50 years. In 1970, the population of California was just over 20 million people. Today, that number is closer to 40 million. The fundamental issue lies in the capacity to store water during periods of abundance. Using the classic analogy of a bank account, the idea is to deposit surplus water into a savings account to draw upon during times of water scarcity. Unfortunately, California's savings account, its water storage system, isn't large enough to hold the volume of water needed to satisfy demand throughout the arid summer months. On November 2nd, the Bureau of Reclamation and the Sites Project Authority announced they had finalized plans to create a new reservoir in Northern California. The proposed reservoir, named Sites, would be the second largest off-stream reservoir in the nation and would increase Northern California's water storage capacity, or the size of its bank account, by up to 15%. The reservoir will boost water supplies for more than 24 million people, mostly in Southern California and 500,000 acres of Central Valley farmland. Okay, an off-stream reservoir is a reservoir that is not located on a river or stream. It is supplied by a pipeline or an aqueduct. The San Luis Reservoir in Central California is the largest off-stream reservoir in the United States. Although technically it is located on a small stream, it gets the vast majority of its water from the California aqueduct. This is achieved by pumping the aqueduct water uphill to the reservoir. Since the site's reservoir is an off-stream reservoir, the single monolithic dam that we're used to that typically creates a reservoir is not required. Instead, a complex series of dams and dikes, along with the natural contours of the surrounding foothills, will work together to create the reservoir. First, we have the two main dams, the site's dam and the Golden Gate. The site's dam will be built across the Stone Corral Creek and the Golden Gate Dam will block Funks Creek. And finally, six smaller saddle dikes will hold in the north end of the lake. Okay, time for another quick knowledge nugget. A saddle dike, also referred to as a saddle dam, is a secondary dam constructed to close off a low point in the natural reservoir perimeter. The term saddle comes from the shape of the geographical feature it typically occupies. It often resembles a saddle in the landscape. It's basically just a low point on the ridge between two higher points. The new site's reservoir project is designed to pump between 470 and 640,000 acre-feet of water per year from the Sacramento River. 
This water will be pumped through existing canals to the reservoir located about 14 miles away. The water will only be pumped from the Sacramento River when the water is running high, such as during major store events or during the spring runoff. The water will be pumped from the Sacramento using a new pumping station near Red Bluff, California. The water will then be carried to the reservoir by the existing Tehama Calusa and Glen Calusa canals. The project includes a new pumped storage hydroelectric plant, but will actually be a net power consumer. The new power plant, however, does offer a few benefits. First, it will be able to generate peaking power. So during times of peak electricity consumption, this new power plant could provide some power to reduce the load. It's also designed to provide large scale energy storage, allowing the power plant to store electricity for use during peak power. The site's reservoir is expected to have a capacity to store up to 1.5 million acre feet of water. This will make the site's reservoir the sixth largest in California in terms of capacity. For comparison, the Shasta Reservoir, California's largest, has a capacity of 4.5 million acre feet, and Folsom has a capacity of 1.1 million acre feet. The site's reservoir is designed so that capacity can be expanded in the future by raising the height of the surrounding dams and dikes. During dry months or even dry years, water will then be released from the reservoir back into the Sacramento River system to meet various demands, such as municipal water supplies and agriculture. Although the concept of the site's reservoir has been around for decades, Progress on the project has been painfully slow. The idea for the reservoir first emerged during the birth of the state water project back in the 1960s, but interest dropped off as other water projects took priority. Then, in the late 1990s, as California's population continued to grow, concerns over the water supply returned. At this point, the state revisited potential water storage solutions, including the site's reservoir. In 2014, California voters passed Proposition 1, which allocated funds for several water storage projects, including sites. From that point, several environmental reports were conducted, economic studies were conducted, and more funding has been secured. Then in June of this year, water officials formally approved the water rights application for the site's reservoir. Securing these water rights was one of the biggest obstacles that could have halted the project permanently. Then finally, on November 2nd, the Bureau of Reclamation, along with California's State Water Project, released the final environmental impact report for the site's reservoir. Along with securing the water rights, this environmental report is the last thing standing in the way of making the site's re reservoir a reality. Construction of the project should start sometime in 2026 and is expected to take about six years to complete. The estimated cost for the site's project is in the billions of dollars, with figures ranging from $3.5 to $5 billion or more, depending on changes in design, capacity, and of course the cost overruns that are typical of these large infrastructure projects. The site's reservoir will be operated by the California State Water Project, with an annual operating cost of between $10 and $20 million. The estimated economic benefits are around $260 million per year. The site's reservoir project has faced opposition from various stakeholders and groups. The primary concern is that too much water will be removed from an already over-allocated Sacramento River. Siphoning more water away from the river will simply quicken the river's environmental collapse. Proponents of the site's reservoir counter that water will only be pumped from the Sacramento River in times of abundance. And that the new reservoir will actually enhance the health of the river by releasing water in times of drought, thereby maintaining the river's flow to support fish populations and flushing salt water out of the San Joaquin Delta. So there you have it. The site's reservoir project has been long in the making, but we finally have some progress. And we may even see shovels hit the dirt sometime soon. That's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. 
please hit the like button on this video and consider subscribing. I really value your support.